Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Monarch Legacy of Monsters by Story Archives. I'm your host, Mario Busto, alongside Zachary Newton, the other host. Welcome back. We're back. Episode five, titled The Way Out. You know, the only way out, Zach, is through, according to May and her breathing exercises in that tunnel. Mm. Thankfully, they were wildly effective because. Kate got over her traumatic experiences pretty quickly in this episode, and we learned a lot Very. about Kate. A lot of things that were unexpected, a lot of things that were kind of expected, right? We saw that traumatic flashback earlier in the series yeah, with her children's school bus just plummeting to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. But we also didn't know that she was kind of like her dad, you know? Uh, she had a girlfriend or it appears right i i was a little confused by that i couldn't tell if she was cheating on the girl she was sleeping with or if she was cheating on the girl who was at school i couldn't tell but hey i guess like father like daughter <laughs> yeah living a double life of some sort no i mean she, she has yeah. a, a girlfriend she, uh, at least i don't know if it was any more serious than that at any point but um i think she was totally cheating on the the one at the school with the one in the bed you think so that's what it felt like to me. Cause I mean, there, there was this moment, like there was this small scene where the one that was at school was like, we had a good thing. You just didn't want anything good or something like that. So I feel like maybe she was like, like she was the one they that was cheated on. Maybe they were like dating before and then she got with the other one. And then, and then the too. other one was like, Hey, why don't you move in with me? You don't got to choose your $7 lattes over your lunch money, you know? Yeah. Which, um, yeah, I couldn't kind of quite figure out the whole evacuation scenario that they had going on there with G-Day, right? You know, you had Godzilla mm. attacking San Fran. To me, I would think that the least safe place to be would be a, the Golden Gate Bridge. Like, that would be, to me, the last place I'd want to be. Um, mm. They didn't really give us a good sense of where we were. Was that bus leaving San Fran and going north over the bridge, like towards, like, Sausalito? Or was it heading from... Sausalito and you know Candle. There's like a park that's past Golden Gate Bridge. If you ever drive uh, north, never. That is uh, like just past it. I wonder if they were heading towards that direction. If they were heading back into the city, I would assume the safer thing would be to leave the city. Because San Fran, you when you visit San Fran, uh -huh. I will say this because you know I, we're not used to earthquakes being from Florida. We're used no. to hurricanes. Like hurricanes would terrify Bring them on any day. San Francisco people, but you know earthquakes would terrify us. You know, um, when I went to San Francisco, I thought to myself, like, this city's like just one solid earthquake away from just it all being over. Because uh, everything's like on top of each other. It's like very, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was one of my first impressions when I went in there. Um, beautiful city. Uh, apparently, though, it's it's been destroyed to a degree that it kind of reminds me of Last of Us, where you had like yeah. this, it was almost forbidden to go into the red zone. Uh, you know, the military has it zoned off. And I guess it took Godzilla for San Francisco to start arresting looters. So um, <laughs> that was... Uh, That's a great point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's funny. You're just, yeah. you're just one Godzilla attack away from law and order. Um, yeah, that's all you need. What'd you think of episode five? It wasn't. It definitely wasn't my favorite episode. I mean, we, we we did get to learn a little bit about Kate. Finally, you know, we got some of her backstory. Um now I know why her mother just always sounded so annoying to me on the phone. Like I was, was always so uh, suspicious of her mother. I kind of like her mother in real life though here. Yeah. She yeah, seems yeah. pretty, pretty cool. Um, a little bit of like a pushover, I, I think. But I mean, she clearly had suspicions that her husband was cheating on her. Like that's why she seems so nosy towards the beginning of this episode. Like, what did you find? What did you find? She was expecting to find something. That's, yeah, that's she why had she had that tone. It was like uh, Kate was borderline. She was in a depressive rut after her kids, her students died in G Day. Understandable, uh, under, by the way. Very, like that's, very understandable. that sucks. But very understandable from the mother's perspective that she'd rather her daughter not kill herself and uh, get out of her room, right? She probably didn't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. And um, for whatever reason, the thing that she found for her to do was to go to Tokyo to check on the lease of her father's. But maybe that was the only thing that felt like such a, a palpable reason. Like maybe she just needed something extreme. But it did feel like a cop-out and was kind of glad to see her, Caroline, apologize to Kate at the end of the episode because she essentially said, you know, 
I liked having a part-time husband is essentially what she says. You know, she liked yeah. the lifestyle. Uh, she liked being with him and she wasn't incredibly bothered at the fact that it was kind of like having a part-time husband, but the result was that Kate had a part-time father. So I would have to say Kentaro seems to have won the parent lottery compared to Kate in this scenario because Kentaro's mom was a, was a real one too. Yeah, she was a gem. I, I liked her. Yeah, a lot. I, liked, I mean, I if, liked her. If, if we were stacking up the parents here, I, I think it's Kentaro's mom that definitely takes the cake. I agree. I agree. I would have to say, like, I'd prefer her as my mother than than Caroline. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I it just felt like a lot of although there was a lot of places that we went to in this episode, there wasn't a lot that occurred. We picked up from last episode where, you know, Kentaro is hell bent on going to the place he thought he saw from the airplane mm -hmm. and he was right he ends up making the call unfortunately the call ends up going to monarch hq in alaska yeah which saves all of them and saves may from probably hypothermia and losing all function of her lower body um but it does bring them into the iron grip of deputy deputy director verdugo who seems to have a real uh, hard on for uh, Lee Shaw here in terms of their past, even putting up very emotional footage of, I don't know what she was trying to say with that footage, but I think it kind of alludes to know. what I think, which is that Lee Shaw had a thing for Kiko and he is perhaps the true uh, father of Hiroshi. Uh, the way she was flipping her hair, be hair behind her ear. Look, man, you, you never know. You really never know. But I, I will say, I wouldn't Bill be surprised was if that a, was the he, case. Bill Randall was a dweeb, man. Like, he's he just was. kind of he a dweeb. Was, he, was, he was a nerd. Uh, not the cool kind of nerd. That He's like the the lame kind of nerd that runs around with a camera recording themselves and yeah. everything they do. That kind yeah. of nerd. Yeah. yeah. So, it was one of those things where you see the chemistry between Kiko and, and Lee Shaw, and you just figure something had to have happened. And the, and the age mystery is still a thing. Because, and by the way, I do not know, and I'm not apologizing for this. I don't know the name of that female guard who's becoming a very prominent character in this show because they never mention her name. She's just intimidating guard number one for me in my head. Like, that's all I think yeah. of her as. I don't know what her name is. I know we have Tim because you went on a diatribe about Tim's not being a threat to, to Look, people. It's, just, it's the name. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Well, that's the only reason I remembered his name because... Uh, and let me tell you something. The the trio of May, Kentaro, and Kate really gave uh they gave him a hard time when he dropped them off at the airport when he was really the only one sticking his neck out for these kids, you know? Mm -hmm. While direct deputy director Verdugo seems to just be the driving force for whatever Lee is saying is the wrong way for Monarch to be acting. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Tim, I don't know, man. Like I kind of feel like there's there's moments he has where I'm like, maybe, maybe he's kind of a good guy. You know, maybe Monarch's not so bad, but I, I feel like they've really tried to paint Monarch as like this just really big, ominous, threatening organization in this episode, more so than they have in the others. I mean, at, at the very least with the way that we start out, everybody's kind of locked away in interrogation rooms. I wasn't really sure how dark of a turn this was, this was going to take this episode, but we got out of it pretty quick. Yeah, they just kind of let go of the kids, which probably because they have no leads. And it it was always, I think it was pretty obvious to everyone in the room that May had a backup of these files. I, I said it in the previous episode. Yeah. She has to have a backup of the files. If this was a serious organization, I think they would have done whatever they needed to do to get those files out of May. But it turns out May wants to go home or so it would appear that she's going to betray everybody and do what she needs to do to get home, which her... I really want to know how her backstory comes into play with this whole, with the rest of these stories, because something seriously must be afoot or amiss for May. May. Yeah, yeah, something's up with her. Nobody knows her. Nobody knows her background. She can, she wipes her apartment clean when she leaves, even with the organization like Monarch not knowing. But yeah. the uh, female bodyguard number one, or intimidating bodyguard number one, um, if you can ever find her name. Uh, I, f I feel like her name is, uh, is it Duval? Duval. Yes, it was Duval. I don't know. I'm just saying it's Duval from now on. I, I, th I think it's Duval. That's the All closest right. I've been able to find. Duval does name her sister Lyra, which we do hear in a phone call in the previous episode. So mm -hmm. there is no warrants for May. We don't know what the situation is there, but something is seriously wrong with May's background uh, for her not to be able to go home.
Yeah. Well, I think we're we're really owed two more backstories here at the very least. Um one one is going to be May. Like we we need to understand what is is going on, what her motivation is. I don't know, maybe that's what we'll kind of get in the next episode because I, f- I mean i feel like we kind of pivoted to her story right at the yeah. end of this episode. yeah definitely whole, like, i want to go her. home like i'm sure there's going to be a lot more about her backstory and i really do want to know what happened with leisha like i kind of hope they explain that a little bit more they, they kind of like um uh referenced like a similar idea that we've been talking about where i don't know maybe there was a mission maybe there was like this portal that he went into and something went wrong i, I don't know like I guess it makes sense, but I hope we get to kind of see a little bit more of what actually happened and really have the question answered. I don't want that to just be like a mystery. No, that I don't I think ha- it will. A question I have the entire season. Like, it's not Accor- that interesting. According to Tim, it was a botched mission that we're referring to why he should doesn't look like he's 92 years old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I am glad that I was a little concerned that the trio of May, Ken, and Kate were going to leave and then they were going to be like, all right, Lee, what did you find for us? Like, he's kind of like a double agent playing both sides. Yeah. I was a little concerned about that for a moment, uh, but immediately it was pretty much cleared up for me um, in terms of like, he seems to be pretty pure. He seems to be a rebel with a cause against Monarch and the way they're operating. Mm. Uh, Monarch doesn't seem to be a wholly horrible organization. Tim even goes so far as to wanting to recruit the Randa kids to be a part of it as it is their legacy. He seems to have a reverence for um, Hiroshi Randa and Bill Randa and just the founders of this organization yeah. more so than Verdugo has. And Duvall, I don't know what her allegiances are because she seems to, they keep on putting the camera on her throughout the episode. Every time Lee is pretty much talking to the camera and saying that Monarch is operating the wrong way. She seems to kind of have a moral compass as well. She even stood up for Tim in the previous episode and mm-hmm. wanting to continue working with him. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a split between Duval and Tim. Uh, I mean, with Duval and Tim splitting from Verdugo, who seems to yeah. be kind of just wanting to ascend the corporate hierarchy and become the head director, as Lee was kind of taunting her with the deputy uh, <laughs> position title. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems like there's some company politics going on inside of Monarch. I, I, I really don't feel like I have a true sense of who's in charge or what the motivations are. Yeah. I I, I really don't know yet. And I'm okay. I'm okay with that being the big mystery. Like I'm looking forward to figuring out what that is. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully we get there soon. Um, I like, I don't know if I, if I'd be okay with that mystery dragging on for multiple seasons. And I really don't think that we like, I feel like we're going to get a much clearer sense of their motivations, Monarch's motivations, probably in the next couple of episodes. We're going to have to get more flashbacks of Lee when he was younger uh, with Kiko and with Bill. Uh, So I'm sure we're going to kind of see how all of that unfolds in this season. Dude, did Apple knowingly release Monarch Legacy of Monsters in a time where there's like a million Godzilla movies coming out? I don't know, man. I, I like, sent you an email about one like yesterday I saw. I, I sent you one first, which is not the one you sent me. I sent you j- the Japanese one, the, the Godzilla Minus One or something it's called. I don't know what yeah. it's called. Uh, that one's getting a lot of buzz because it's like a $16 million budget on that movie. And mm. people are saying it looks better than the Avengers. Uh, it's, okay. like the, it's like the highest rated movie of the year or some crap like that. Yeah. Uh, and then you have this Godzilla and Kong movie that you sent me. That's another one. And I believe there's like one more that I'm, that we're not talking about, but it's like so much Godzilla coming out right now. Godzilla season. Yeah. It's, I don't know what it is. Honestly, I, I, I mean, there's been a few Godzilla movies here and there and a few Kong movies here and there, but I was not expecting that much to come out right now. But dude, that, that, uh, the one that I sent you looked so wild. Like, yeah. it, you know, it kind of felt like Journey to the Center of the Earth in some yeah. ways where you were just like, you kept like diving deeper into this. And like, man, you think Kong is big? Bro. Honestly, I felt like it felt like Batman versus Superman or like, what's that movie where like the heroes are fighting each other? Uh, the Justice League thing or whatever. Yeah, but like when the good guys turned on each other because Godzilla and Kong are, are not always evil in the movies sometimes they're the villain sometimes they're the good guy and i think it was like a superman versus batman movie where uh those two fought it kind of had that kind of mm-hmm. vibe to it in the trailer um yeah. but it, then it felt like they kind of teamed up in the movie 
And so, like, if Godzilla and Kong team up, like, the world is screwed, you know? It's, Dude, better, seriously. it's better that they fight each other, you know? Yeah. I think the, the one that I was, I, I was referencing is Godzilla x Kong, the new empire. It's supposed to come out in 2024. And the one I was referencing is called, isn't it like Godzilla minus one? I, f- I think it is. It was all yeah. written in Japanese, I believe. Godzilla minus one. Yeah, Godzilla one. minus one. That's right. Yep. Yeah, that one looks insane. I would actually be interested in watching that one. The other one, mm, Millie Bobby watch. Brown is in it. The one that you sent? Yeah, apparently. Oh, I'll, go, I'll go watch that then. I'll watch of that. Of course. Of course. Um, all right. San Francisco. Kentaro is a damn genius with that little chart of his with, you know, between Kate and the hidden continents and Kentaro just having his, you know, magical, the guy is like a, a maestro of lights, Zach, you should appreciate oh, that. I, I know, I do. I was tech. like, that's pretty cool. I don't yeah. think the sun would bleed through that paper quite like that, but That's the thing. They didn't know cool. you were watching the show. They didn't exactly. know that that's, that's you were probably like, what, you were, what, they put haze in this room right before yeah, this? That's like, exactly what? what I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Yeah, you're going to see the beams of light come, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but either way it, it lit up Hiroshi's uh course and I guess um they're going to Africa next is that is that the plan from here because yeah we got we got a new waypoint like I, I think they're headed to Africa now and you know May's going to be leaking all of the hey, we're headed here now yeah all right we're on it yeah so heading to Africa in the next episode probably getting a flashback I would assume and I think we're we're due for a major Lee Shaw flashback uh, oh yeah! In the next episode, because we we haven't had one in two episodes, so I think we'll get a bit of Lee. We might get some May, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, hopefully that's the end of seeing Caroline this season. I think she had her peace with her daughter. Yeah, uh, I don't want any more, you know, mama drama. I just want get straight to the point. And by the way, Kate really doesn't know how to break the news to anybody. She really no. just threw it at her mother, but. Uh, maybe her mother kind of deserved it, considering her mother threw her to Tokyo to go find out. That and, I mean, look, she clearly knew something was up. She just didn't seem to care much. I mean, yeah, sure, she enjoyed the part-time husband, which is a little little weird, but I don't know. I mean, I, I understand uh, like a, a bit well, of Kate's frustration, but yeah, you're totally correct. She's horrible at breaking she, news. She enjoyed the husband without the responsibility. Who knows? Maybe yeah. she had a little thing going on on the side with James. I'm just kidding. I don't think that was the case, but I don't, I don't think so. I love <laughs> even, oh man, the end of this episode when Kate was talking to her mother and, you know, she's like, so are you and James like, and, and her mom's like, yeah, he's just waiting for me to, to be ready. And she's like, oh, cool. Dad's not dead. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. even then she was like yeah before that yeah, dad's oh, not man. dead and then she kind of almost took back the whole part-time <laughs> husband thing yeah you know i want to know what the hell's up with hiroshi having two families because it could just be that you know he's got that dog in him you know what i mean like he has that you know kind of yeah he has that kind of uh devilish side to him that he could just do that sort of thing or it could just be maybe he like lee Ended up in some portal. But then again, these women that he's been with looked like the exact same age. So whatever occurred must have been like, a, you know, summer in Tokyo, you know, or summer in San Fran. I mean, he seemed very invested into both of them. And I don't know that he's just like a dog like he that doesn't, or something. He doesn't I mean, he, look like... He doesn't like, seem like a player. Like, I mean, he yeah. looks like almost as much of a nerd as Bill Randa did when he was yeah. vlogging in the 40s. He doesn't seem like he was a bad dad to either of these two. They have the fondest memories of him. Yeah. So even similar memories. I mean, they were they were walking around in the forbidden red zone here singing what songs. The, what if there are two Hiroshis? Hmm. I don't think there's there's not two Hiroshis. Because there was always time where he was in one place and, you know, in the other or vice versa. All right. I'm trying He's to give the guy forth. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he split. They were trying to like split the atom. He split himself into two and he was like, let me have two families. Maybe maybe he was just trying to like hedge his bets and be like, well, <laughs> I mean, there's this big ass organization I, do, after me. Do maybe think, I can hide one family. I don't know. Do you think this was like a, hey, a social experiment for him? He like he, He's like the classic anime dad, bro. He's like, maybe he's trying to test which child is more worthy to take over Monarch. And by effing up their childhoods enough, which one would rise from the ashes? Because I'll say this, 
nobody needs this more than Kate. Like no, Kintaro is already kind of an esteemed artist. Kate yeah. is like a, you know, meandering kind of. She needs a of, mission. Uh, she needs a goal. Huh? She's like lost. She needs a mission. Yeah, she's busy cheating on her girlfriends, and then you know. Yeah, that too. She lost all her students in a tragic accident. Her mother is kind of like you know. <laughs> A free spirit. She has her own goal now with FEMA, helping people recover their personal items, and she's found mm-hmm. a new love. So, Kate needs this. And by the way, we didn't talk about this, but when she was in that holding cell in the episode, she was cool as a clam in there. Or what is it? What do they say? Cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber, not a clam. <laughs> I've never heard of a freaking <laughs> cool <laughs> clam. I've been hanging out with my cousin too much. He botches every phrase and name known to mankind. I've been hanging out with him too much. Um, Amazing. She's cool as a cucumber in there, and and he's, you know, he's just losing flipping his shit, out, dude. you know, throwing yeah. chairs and stuff. So, and by the way, Lee's very calm. Maybe there's some sort of relation, Kate. Look, man, I, like I said, it it wouldn't surprise. Have me. we set that wager yet? I think that needs to be one of the wagers we do. We, I don't think we did that. I'm gonna I go would. and say Lee is the one who is the true father of Hiroshi. I'm, I am going to have to look that up. Because if but not, I'll, I'll, I will I'll stake my claim there. That. I'll, I'll take note of it. I will just have to look it up. Awesome. Yeah. Well, one of the bets was... Uh, whether or not Kiko was dead right after she was drugged down into the pit. That was one of the... Uh, and I the said no. that we had. Yeah, you said that no, she was alive after the pit. Uh, and I said, nah, she's not alive. So okay. we, can, we can make this another bet here. So what's the bet? What's the wager, my friend? Well, you kind of lose both wagers if she's alive. But we can, if she is alive, you'll have a chance of redemption to kind of make your money back, right? Because you'll be choosing the opposite of what I'm saying. So if she was alive... Actually, no, it wouldn't matter either way. No, because, because she had they the already kid had a kid. That. They already had a kid before. Okay, she so then this, the this wager works even better then. So I'm saying Lee is the father of Hiroshi. And you're saying Bill is the father of Hiroshi. Okay, cool. Got it. Yep. I am saying Bill is the father of Hiroshi. All right. Okay. Uh so we leave this episode with a few things going on. Lee's getting carried away by these two or kind of led away by these two armed guards. Uh you got Ken, Kate, and May, presumably heading towards Africa now. And I'm assuming Tim and Duval and Monarch is tracking them somehow because May is on this phone call with Duval. So she's probably leaking all the info to them. Or maybe they're not stupid and they know Monarch let them go easily for a reason. And she's maybe throwing off the scent and saying, we're going to head to, you know, China or some like random place so that they can do take care of business in africa but we'll and my see. my mind went there as well i'm i'm just not sure uh, you know th- th- these these kids haven't I, I say kids they haven't proven to me uh that they're intelligent enough yet to be able to like throw them off their scent and pick up like oh yeah it yeah. was too easy they I'm seem calling, a little gullible yeah. like i kind of do agree with monarch's position on that I'm calling them kids simply because it's easier to say that other than all three of their names. But um, yeah, they, and they are the kids. They're the kids of the show. Yeah, they're the kids of the show. You know, but they're all like grown ass adults too. So I, yeah, I know they're probably older than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe some, maybe, maybe a couple maybe about of them. the same. Yeah, maybe a couple of them. That's all right, um, let's wrap this up. Let's do it. Let's start with favorite character of the episode, Lee Shaw. Lee Shaw, Easy, with, easily with little FaceTime, Lee Shaw. Lee yeah, Shaw man, was good because he was throwing it back in Verdugo's face, which I appreciated. Yeah, sticking it to the man, I, I liked that. Uh, I'm gonna go with. I was gonna, I was gonna go with May, but then I was just thinking, I'm like, man, there really just there just wasn't much. She's really been dragged into this family drama. Yeah, she has. Yeah, you know, I, I'm gonna cop out. I'm gonna go Lee too. I, I agree with you. That like when I think back on the majority of things that happened in this episode that actually mattered, <laughs> I feel like that that's what comes to mind. Yeah. Let let's let's go with favorite scene. 
My favorite scene is when uh, they're in the city, like in the red zone, and Kentaro and and uh, Kate are singing the cheesy Japanese commercial jingles. Mm. That was my favorite moment. Although I was yelling at the screen, saying, "Why are you screaming? You just oh, got away from the military." Yeah. yeah, seriously, like right. Yeah. And they're running around with these bright flashlights too, yeah, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. flying them all over the place. Like not not super bright. That was good. Um, I'd probably go with. I, I liked the. I, I liked the way the episode started with everybody in the holding cells. It was too short for me personally. Yeah. Though, though, if I'm really kind of like thinking through what happened, I, <laughs> I get, I get why Monarch let him go, right? Because, yeah. I mean, I kind of agree with their perspective that these are gullible little kids. Just like yeah, eh, they don't know. Man, what to do we got them. our bait. Like, just let them go. Yeah. All right. Um, but you weren't satisfied. Yeah. Like, so you would have been satisfied if somebody died in that no, interrogation. No, I knew you were going to bring that up. I just knew you were going to bring that up. No, I didn't want anybody to, to die. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I was happy nobody died here. I just, I wish it were like a little, like, I kind of wish we found out a little more history while we were here. Right? Yeah. Like, like, we had a moment where all four of these people, May, uh, Kentaro, Kate, and Lee were all in a holding cell with Monarch, with Duvall there, with like Tim there. With, we didn't learn anything. Uh, yeah. verdugo there and like there was no added benefit to that really yeah. other than like like we immediately got the kids let go maybe so, they had to get off the clock maybe they couldn't maybe they're cutting budgets at monarch and they couldn't clock overtime yeah I don't, I, it must must have been something like that but i i liked it i liked where it started i like seeing kantaro kind of like lose his mind and throw chairs against a camera that was kind of funny I just I wish there was a little bit more of, uh, of the story that developed there, but I get, I'll, I get I'm gonna you. pick that one. I get you. You like the scene. You just would have liked to have seen May lose a couple of fingernails, like in interrogation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just rip it off. He's something yeah. like that. Yeah, cut off a toe, mail it to Kentaro. Yeah. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Anyways, uh, best line of the episode. Huh. And that's a tough one. On this one, ain't it? I wrote one down. I did write one down. I feel like Lee had a Lee had a good one. Um, I'm blanking on what, what he said. I wrote down what May said as my favorite, which is the only way out is through. But I've heard that outside of this show, so it feels weird. Yeah, I didn't I didn't love that one. I I kind of just liked the, the way that Lee was like, yeah, deputy director, deputy um, director. Verdugo. Yeah, that was just that was kind of funny. I, I if I had to pick a line, it would probably be that. <laughs> There's nothing else that jumps out at me. Yeah, I'm I'm muddling lines because I'm listening to um, I'm listening to an audio book of uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings, right now. Um, like, while you're recording? Yes, while I'm recording. That's why what I do. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, but I'm on an episode where uh, it was, it, there's a fantastic line that I didn't know was said by um, a character named Strider, which I've obviously seen the movie, so I'm speaking in code because. Let me tell you, man, I just, Spotify's offering, you know, Spotify plug, uh, Spotify premium now offers audiobooks, which we're not, uh, making any monetization for promoting this, but nonetheless, it's one of the best features you got. I actually finished listening to the songbird, the ballad of songbird and snakes, which is the hunger games prequel book. Ah. I, I listened to that. Let me tell you, I, I get into this mode where if you look at my bookshelf, if you ever want to be like a sleuth, you yeah. see, I got a lot of like, uh, you know, serious books on there, but I, I like fiction. I like storytelling. I like, you know, world building. No one's better than Tolkien. And, you know, besides the only person who maybe comes close is J.K. Rowling. Um, and uh, I've always wanted to read Lord of the Rings. Uh, and I owned, I've owned the book since I was like in fourth grade, but wow. uh, I never actually read them. And I'm like on chapter 10 of Fellowship of the Rings and it's excellent. The voice actor is great. And if you pay for Spotify, you get it for free. And let me tell you, Peter Jackson is the GOAT who adapted those movies, uh, those books to films. And his decision making from a directing standpoint of like which scenes he cut out and which ones he emphasized more so mm -hmm. far is like spot on. Like the dude is a, he's incredible. Incredible. All right. Awesome. That's my tangent. I liked the tangent. It's been a long time since I've seen the movies. So. Oh yeah. I think it, you should do it annually where you watch all the movies every year. That's I haven't like, done it. That's like nine hours of film, isn't it? I, I'm going to do it this year, though, unless I get caught up on the books, which at this point, I wasn't expecting this character arc turn for me where I was going to mm. start listening to Lord of the Rings. But um, it was between this or the Elon Musk um, bio by Walter Isaacson, which I is also free. That. 
No, don't yeah. buy it. It's free on Spotify. Oh, you're uh, serious? Yeah, I'm I don't have serious. premium though. I, I I don't have Spotify premium. Zach, that is horrible. That is a horrible thing to say. Look, if, man. I, oh, I've but got, that's because I've you pay for Apple. Pl- yeah, I've got the yeah, family plan with you. Apple. It comes with the music. I'm just like, just do yeah. it all in, in one spot. I get you. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are they offering audiobooks? I don't think so, pal. Well, no, but you can buy an audiobook. <laughs> I wish there was a subs- It would be really cool if they actually integrated the subscription. They should because they just upped their prices again. So that would yeah. be nice. It's like an extra 2 or $3 a month now. So screw you, Apple. Come on. Give me more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode, all of you audience members out there who are listening. We hope you're enjoying Monarch Legacy of Monsters even more. And we hope you stay tuned for our For All Mankind Season 4 coverage. I got to say, if I can rank the shows that I'm watching right now, I'd have to say Hard Knocks Miami Dolphins is the best. Of course. I'd have can. to say, <laughs> which, were, which, you know, which, which I'm covering on Tuesday nights most of the time. Next week, it will be delayed because I will be working uh, on a shoot for those days. So it will be coming out later next week. I don't know what day yet. Um and for all mankind after hard knocks cuz for this this season of for all mankind is is the bee's knees it's very good and then monarch i'd have to say and i just started watching slow horses which you told me you started watching years ago yeah um and let me tell you episode 1 is terrific i don't know if it's going to keep up this this great uh pace it's on but it's very good i love the actors i have a crush on uh olivia cook who plays sid in Slow Horses. Uh, she's also in House of, House of the Dragon. Um, is that her name? I might have... Olivia, I may have attributed, attributed Olivia Cook. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, it's definitely her. Anyways. Uh, um, yeah, she, she's also in um, uh, Bates Motel. I haven't watched that. I haven't watched that. Um, but yeah, the show's excellent. Gary Oldman is always good. Oh, yeah. And um, that's a good one. That was That's one of them where... If we weren't doing Monarch right now, I would have said let's do Slow Horses, because um, it's a it would be a fun show to kind of talk about a little bit. But um, yeah, that's that's what I'm watching. What are you watching? Anything anything new? I agree, it is a good one. You know, I I was just mentioning to you, it's it's not brand new, but it is an Apple TV Plus movie that I, I watched a while back, and I only remembered I watched it because when I finished this episode of um. Uh, Monarch, it popped up as like a recommended to watch thing, and it's it's called Swan Song. And if you if you like Black Mirror, I, I'm sorry, is it a movie? I think it's a TV show, if I remember correctly. But Swan anyways, Song, yeah, it's it's a movie or a TV show from Apple. Is Mahershala uh, is Mahershala Ali in, in this? Uh, it's yeah, a film. Is. Yes, he is. Okay. Yes, he is. Yeah, he- yeah. If you like Black Mirror, it's a movie. Sorry, not a TV show here. It's Swan Song. It's a good yeah. movie. Like it, it's it's very interesting. It's a little slow. Um, I I will say it's a little depressing. Maybe just I mean the subject matter, but um, it was a, it was a really good movie. Um, funny yeah. enough, the actor from Swan Song, Mahershala Ali, um, is in a movie that's releasing on Netflix tomorrow, which is I called I Leave the World Behind, which is directed by Sam Sam Esmail. Who mm-hmm. also wrote and directed Mr. Robot on USA? If you ever watched that show, um, uh, which that's a show that's actually a movie I want to watch this weekend. There's there's a few movies I want to watch this weekend. I want to watch that. I want to watch the uh, Flowers of the Blood Moon, the Scorsese flick. Um, yep. On Apple, I do want to watch that, and I want to watch um, Oppenheimer. I just got Oppenheimer as a gift um, for my parents. Actually, who got? I recommend everybody get the physical because it comes with like three hours of bonus content, which I don't believe comes on the digital and it does come with a digital code. So that's awesome. Yeah. Anyways, it, buying the Blu-ray is definitely, has definitely been pretty good. I, I also watched, uh, it's kind of like a short film thing called the wonderful story of Henry sugar on Netflix. It's, um, Oh man, what is the name of the guy? I always remember it's Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson uh, okay. made it. It, it was it was interesting. It was a nice little short one. But I've started watching Band of Brothers because I want to get ready for. Are you leaking some, it, Zach? What am I leaking? I, I mean, I'm I 
there's ads for it on 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 Apple. I mean, are I want to le- watch the show. Are you are you leaking the fact that we're covering Masters of the Air? On, I, I think uh, on I think you just leaked that we're covering that show. Okay, but no, I like I Band of Brothers. It just kept popping in my face. It's on Netflix right now, so I figured you know what? It's been a long time. Let me watch it. Plus, I've also got like, dude, my Netflix right now is like so full of. Uh, like war movies and TV shows. You've got like uh, all the light we cannot see. Saving Private yeah. Ryan's on there. Yeah. It's leaving soon. There's Narvik, you know, Ordinary you know, Men. Like you know, a movie so I've been many. wanting to watch. Um, for a long time, and I mean, I want to rewatch. I've seen this movie like a million times. Uh, mm-hmm. The Patriot, with Mel Gibson. Oh uh, yeah, I haven't watched that movie in years, and uh, I've been meaning to watch it. So, awesome. all right. Let's let's wrap this. I think I think uh, we gave the audience enough of a rabbit hole, and it, yeah, yeah, let's wrap it. Let's do it. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of Monarch Legacy of Monsters by Story Archives. You can find this podcast anywhere you find podcasts: Apple and Spotify podcast. You can visit us on YouTube at Soapbox Podcast Network. Our website is soapbox.house. You can email us at contact at soapbox.house, and there's a link in the description below to sign up for our quarterly newsletter. Perfect. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time. Peace. Peace.